Hey guys, this is Paul with Sons of Speed and today we are in the amazing Toyota Supra. Now you might be asking yourself, it's November, didn't this car come out like at the end of May? And you'd be right, but let me give you a crash course on how the automotive industry works as far as press cars, journalists, and YouTubers go. Basically, the more subscriptions you have, the faster and more cars you get. The less subscriptions you have, you gotta wait for everybody else to finish. Everybody else has to do their reviews, their videos, their written articles, all that, and then maybe, just maybe, they might give you the car for a few days. And that is the case with us. This is not our full-time job. We do this for our love and passion for cars. In fact, my two colleagues, Chris and Brendan, they're working today, so I have the day off and I'm doing this review solo. So we really, really need your subscription. Please subscribe to our channel. I know everybody asks you that and it's annoying, but in this case, anything to do with automotive industry, it really does help us get cars sooner, quicker, and that way we can get the videos out to you. So if you like what we have to say on our videos, please, please subscribe. Thank you so much. And now, on to the review of the Toyota Supra. So let's talk about the most controversial part of the car and get that out of the way. Yes, there was a collaboration between BMW and Toyota, and let's face it, had that collaboration never happened, this car would never have existed. Toyota needed to make a sports car that was in the $50,000, $60,000 range, not in the eighty dollars to $90,000 range, and had they not teamed up with BMW, this car would have never happened. So I know the purists are all about, you know, how this is blasphemy and this is all a BMW Z4 and a lot of people are calling it the Zupra. And I get it, but at the same time, if that collaboration didn't happen, I wouldn't be driving this car right now. So let's just be happy that we do have a new Toyota Supra and move on. So basically the first thing you notice about this car when you start driving is it is actually really fast. Uh, now we're not talking supercar fast, but for a car in this price point and with this horsepower, this car is fast. Which leads me to another little issue I wanna talk about. There is no way in the world that this car is only making 335 horsepower. It's just not happening. The way this car accelerates off the line is actually amazing. The first few times you do it, you're just like, whoa! And it's just something that you really never get never get used to and it's you just love doing. And in fact, this car is so much fun to drive around just because it's just so quick on acceleration. Now, from my butt meter, I'm guessing this car is making more like 400 horsepower at the crank than the 335 that, they, that they're saying. Um, it's just the fact that from zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds in a car that weighs 3,400 pounds, there's no way this car is 335 horsepower. But, you know, we'll take Toyota for their word for it. But if that really is the case, they really are using every single one of those ponies. That's all I gotta say. So, we're at a red light. And just to kind of give you an idea of just how quickly this car accelerates, let's uh, give a little uh, a little stab at this. Now, it's not just about the zero to 60 times in this car. This car really shines above the 60 mile an hour. It just, it's relentless, it just doesn't let go. So that was... So, how are the brakes? Very, very nice actually. Very linear, uh, very nice 
pedal action, very easy to modulate, and no dead spots. From the beginning to end, you know exactly how much pressure you can apply to achieve the results you want. So another thing that's nice is they don't try to overcomplicate everything and give you like 25 different drive modes. It's basically, it's just two. You got normal and you got sport. You wanna go get the groceries, you wanna go to work, you're in normal mode, you wanna drive a little bit more aggressively or have some fun on the twisties, you put it in sport. When you put it in sport, it firms up the steering, the throttle response, makes the suspension a little bit tighter, and it also gives you uh, quicker shift points, and it gives you that deep throatiness uh, exhaust sound. Uh, and with the pops and burbles, it just, it sounds amazing. <laughs> So speaking of transmissions, this is where the Toyota Super falls a little flat, but it's not bad, it's just not great. First of all, they really could have used a manual transmission in this car. I know for the purists, that was a huge, huge talking point of Toyota coming out with this car and not offering a manual. Uh, there are some companies that are doing the swaps and there is possible talks of them putting in a manual later. So if that's what's holding you from buying this car, wait, it might be coming. Um, but the transmission that they do have is a eight speed automatic. It is not a dual clutch and that's kind of where it could have been even better if they did go with the dual clutch option. But the transmission is good, it's, it's, it's quick, it's just not super quick. Uh, it does struggle upshifting more so than downshifting. Uh, there is a little bit of hunting and pecking going on, especially if you accelerate hard and then let off the gas. It gets a little confused every once in a while. Nothing that is terrible, it's just it could be better. Uh, one thing that is nice though is when you put it in manual mode, it is a pure manual, it will not upshift for you, it will not downshift for you until you actually pull the flappy paddles on the back of the steering wheel. That's always appreciated. Um, so Toyota, if you're listening, we would love to see a manual or a DCT in the future, but uh, for right now, it's a good transmission, it's just not great. So the little back roads are where this car really shines. I mean, it just loves carving out the corners. The back end can get a little squirrely on you under hard acceleration. And when you take the turns, traction control is doing an excellent job of keeping things in check. Uh, if you're very brave or very experienced, go ahead and take the traction control system off. Believe me, you will be doing power over slides all day long in this thing. It's just a fun and capable car. I, I can't I, I, I can't stress that enough. Is the Toyota Supra the perfect sports car? No. It does some things very well, but there are some issues. Around the car, there are many fake air vents. Now, anyone that's been watching our channel knows that we absolutely hate fake air vents. It just cheapens the look of the car and it's downright insulting. I mean, this is not an entry level, go fast, wannabe sports car. This is the real deal. Toyota should not have made all these fake air vents. Now, 
Is there maybe future upgrades where they're gonna need to get that airflow for extra power or better brakes or something like that? If that is the case, they should have left those slots alone and just added them in as they upgraded the car. And the final thing is the transmission, like I said before, uh, not terrible, just not perfect. Maybe some reprogramming, uh, better upshifts would be where I would start. And that leads to another overall issue with the Toyota Supra. It is very fun. It will put a smile on your face every time you get behind the wheel. However, you can tell there is a fundamental struggle in its DNA, meaning that BMW Z4 is the more Grand Tour version of this chassis, while the Toyota Supra is the more sports car of this chassis. And you can see that there is some fundamental struggles between those two dynamics, because even though the Toyota Supra is more leaning towards a sports car, there is definitely some Grand Tour elements in this car. For example, the fact that it was only an automatic transmission, the fact that the steering wheel is too thin actually, um, and the fact that it doesn't even have a flat bottom steering wheel. Uh, the seats are bolstered well, but not track worthy bolstering. You still slide around. And those things are what's keeping this Toyota Supra back from being a true sports car. And hopefully they'll come out with different additions and maybe some modifications to really address these points and make this Toyota Supra the best that it can be. And with that, this has been Paul with Sons of Speed. Thanks for watching.